Charles Bronson is a renowned figure in the film industry, celebrated for his iconic tough guy roles in Western and action movies like Once Upon a Time in the West and The Stone Killer. However, beyond the rugged exterior of Charles Bronson lies a trove of surprising truths now confirmed by his daughter. While he garnered acclaim for his portrayal of resolute characters, it also led to perceptions of him as brash and potentially violent. A long-standing controversial rumor has trailed him throughout his career, its true nature concealed until now. Stay tuned as we delve into the authentic narrative, as confirmed by his own daughter. Before delving into these revelations, it's crucial to comprehend the foundational elements that shaped Charles Bronson's character. Born on November 3, 1921 in Scooptown, nestled within Ehrenfeld, Pennsylvania, a coal mining town. Born Charles Dennis Buczynski, he was the 11th child in a brood of 15, raised within a close-knit Roman Catholic family. Their humble abode is nestled in Ehrenfeld, a town steeped in the rugged beauty of the Allegheny Mountains, just north of Johnstown. His father, Walter Buczynski, hailed from Druskanir Kai, a town nestled in southern Lithuania, belonging to the Lipka Tatar community. Meanwhile, Bronson's mother, Mary, traced her lineage to Tamaqua, another coal mining enclave in Pennsylvania, with her roots firmly anchored in Lithuanian heritage. In the embrace of his large family, Bronson's childhood unfolded against the backdrop of a community where English was not the primary language spoken at home. Like many of his peers, he traversed his formative years enveloped in the rich tapestry of his ancestral tongue. Remarkably, his linguistic repertoire extended beyond the realms of English. He conversed fluently in Lithuanian, Russian, and Greek. Bronson's childhood was marked by a tumultuous relationship with his father, whom he admitted to not knowing well. In a revealing 1973 interview, he reflected on his ambiguous feelings towards his father, unsure whether he harbored love or resentment towards him. Memories of his father's return home were tinged with fear, prompting Bronson and his siblings to retreat into hiding upon his arrival. Tragically, in 1933, Bronson's father passed away, plunging the family further into hardship. At the tender age of 11, Bronson found himself thrust into the grueling world of coal mining, initially assisting in the mining office before descending into the depths of the mine itself. The toil was relentless, with Bronson earning a meager sum of $1 for every ton of coal extracted. Recalling the harsh conditions, he recounted the arduous labor of working double shifts simply to eke out a meager living. Amidst the ravages of the Great Depression, Bronson's family endured unimaginable poverty. Hunger became a constant companion, with Bronson often recalling instances of going without food. Desperate times necessitated creative solutions, such as substituting warm tea for milk to feed his younger sister due to financial constraints. Such dire circumstances forced Bronson into wearing his sister's dress to school. Despite the adversity, Bronson displayed resilience and determination, emerging as the first member of his family to graduate from high school. However, his aspirations were momentarily deferred as he entered the coal mines to contribute to the family's survival. The relentless toil in the dark, claustrophobic tunnels not only etched physical marks, but also instilled in him a fear of confined spaces, manifesting in frequent headaches and lingering discomfort. His poignant recollections often echoed the acrid scent of coal lingering in his nostrils, a haunting reminder of his formative years. Bronson's trajectory took a momentous turn with the outbreak of World War II. In 1943, he answered the call to serve his country, enlisting in the United States Army Air Forces. However, as time passes, narratives can become distorted. While later depictions painted him as a tail gunner, a deeper investigation reveals a different reality. Bronson trained as a gunner in Arizona during the war, spending his days behind the wheel of a delivery truck. After the curtains closed on the war, Mr. Bronson's journey took him down a diverse path of employment opportunities. He wasn't one to confine himself to a single job. Instead, he explored various avenues to carve out his livelihood. From laying bricks to flipping burgers as a short-order cook, and even delving into the world of onion picking in New York, he embraced each endeavor with determination. Then a twist of fate awaited him in Atlantic City, where he found himself renting out beach chairs along the bustling boardwalk. 
Serendipity struck when he encountered actors on vacation from Philadelphia. Seizing the opportunity, he showcased his painting skills, hoping to leave a lasting impression. To his delight, his talent caught their eye, earning him not only a job, but also a chance to step into the realm of acting. Thus, Bronson, initially immersed in the world of painting, stumbled upon a newfound passion for acting. In 1949, fueled by ambition, he embarked on a journey to California where the glitz and glamour of Hollywood beckoned. Enrolling in classes at the esteemed Pasadena Playhouse, the 27-year-old Bronson found himself captivated by the allure of the stage. It was amidst these theatrical surroundings that he found love, being swept off his feet by an 18-year-old aspiring actress named Harriet Tendler. Their whirlwind romance culminated in marriage that very year. As Bronson's career gained momentum, he graced the silver screen with his presence, portraying a myriad of characters. From tough guys to builders and scrappy fighters, he brought each role to life with his unique flair. However, despite his talent and dedication, Bronson realized he didn't fit the conventional mold of a leading man. With characteristic humor, he once quipped about his distinctive voice, humorously likening himself to a quarry rather than a suave Cary Grant type. During his formative years in Hollywood, Charles Bronson struggled to make a significant impact in the bustling world of cinema. While his face may have flickered across the silver screen, he remained largely unnoticed, relegated to roles without top billing. Initially known by the moniker Charles Binsky, his breakthrough arrived in 1954 with his starring role in Drumbeat alongside Alan Ladd, marking the official transition to Charles Bronson. The decision to adopt a new identity stemmed from the tumultuous political climate of the era, characterized by heightened fears of communism spearheaded by Senator Joseph R. McCarthy. Sensing the need to distance himself from his Russian-sounding surname amidst the anti-communist fervor, Bronson embraced the surname that would soon become synonymous with Hollywood fame. Despite his eventual rise to stardom, Bronson's early career was far from glamorous. In a cinematic landscape dominated by big-budget productions, he found himself navigating the industry's fringes. One notable project from this period was Machine Gun Kelly, a low-budget endeavor completed in a mere eight days in 1958. Despite its modest origins, the film caught the attention of none other than Alain Delon, a renowned French actor of the time. Delon's admiration for Bronson's performance transcended borders, leading to an invitation to France to partake in another cinematic venture, Adieu l'Ami. The film's resounding success catapulted Bronson to newfound fame, earning him recognition and acclaim throughout Europe. Bronson's life was a tapestry woven with threads of both triumph and turmoil, mirroring the dichotomy of his on-screen persona. Before delving into the revelations offered by his daughter, let's cast our gaze upon one of his most iconic roles, deeply intertwined with his own reality. In 1963, Bronson stepped into the shoes of Flight Lieutenant Danny Tunnel King Belinsky in the epic film The Great Escape. Struck a chord with Bronson, resonating with his own encounters with tight spaces. His wartime service and childhood spent toiling in mines left an indelible mark, fostering discomfort in confined environments. Filming the claustrophobic tunnel scenes likely stirred echoes of Bronson's past, yet he confronted the challenge with characteristic tenacity. Amidst the production's tumult, Bronson found himself captivated by Jill Ireland a radiant actress already bound in matrimony to David McCallum. Bronson's affections for Ireland blossomed amidst the chaos, culminating in a union that would redefine his personal narrative. Concurrently, his first marriage to Harriet was unraveling, ultimately culminating in divorce in 1965. Bronson's union with Ireland in 1968 heralded a new chapter in his life, marked by burgeoning recognition and adoration from audiences worldwide. Despite occasional script shortcomings, Bronson's unwavering commitment to his craft earned him widespread acclaim. His magnetic blend of tenderness and toughness captivated audiences, earning him monikers like Il Bruto in Italy. As Bronson's fame soared, his persona transcended the confines of the silver screen, becoming synonymous with ruggedness and resilience. Yet beneath the veneer of his on-screen bravado, lay a tumultuous existence marked by real-life encounters with adversity and conflict. His visage, weathered by life's hardships, 
bore witness to a tumultuous past fraught with skirmishes and confrontations. From youthful altercations that left a sergeant nursing a broken arm to heated clashes with directors, Bronson's off-screen exploits were as storied as those depicted on film. Such was the intensity of his demeanor that when Michael Gordon Peterson, Britain's notorious prison hardman, sought a new moniker in 1987, he found solace in the weighty mantle of Charles Bronson. The gravity of Bronson's words, exemplified by his resolute declaration to defend his family at any cost, resonated far beyond the confines of Hollywood. Esquire magazine's publication of his steadfast resolve incited a maelstrom of attention, prompting queries even from esteemed figures like Johnny Carson. Bronson's unyielding candor, epitomized by his terse response to Carson, served as a testament to his unwavering commitment to his principles. Despite his public persona, Bronson remained wary of the press, viewing their inquiries as intrusive and their critiques as hollow. His disdain for film critics, whom he accused of disparaging his work without merit, was palpable. Roger Ebert, in a rare interview with Bronson, detected a simmering intensity in his gaze, hinting at an underlying propensity for violence toward those who provoked his ire. His wife, Ireland, knew about his fiery temper and even laughed about it on a TV show. Bronson's tenure in Hollywood was not without its share of off-screen drama. Known for his rugged demeanor and no-nonsense attitude, he didn't hesitate to clash with directors when artistic differences arose. His blunt criticism of what he deemed Hollywood nonsense often rubbed directors the wrong way, leading to tense moments on set. Indeed, Bronson's reputation for losing his temper was legendary, with directors swapping anecdotes about their encounters with the formidable actor. One such tale comes from Don Siegel, who helmed the film Telephone. Siegel recounted a humorous incident involving Lee Remick, who starred alongside Bronson. During a scene, Remick hesitated to touch Bronson's face, fearing he might inadvertently bite her. In Walter Hill's Hard Times, Bronson portrayed a gritty fighter amidst the backdrop of the Great Depression, sharing the screen with his wife Ireland. Despite his advancing age, Bronson maintained an impressive physical condition, although his smoking habit took a toll on his stamina. Tensions arose over the editing of Ireland's scenes, highlighting Bronson's mercurial temperament. However, Hill and Bronson eventually resolved their differences. Director Sean Penn experienced firsthand Bronson's reluctance to deviate from his established on-screen persona. In The Indian Runner, Bronson expressed reservations about his character meeting his demise, fearing it might disappoint his loyal Italian fan base. Even comedic actor Billy Crystal found himself at odds with Bronson when he sent him the script for City Slickers, only to receive a furious phone call from the actor protesting his character's fate. Bronson adamantly reminded Crystal of his cinematic legacy, firmly asserting that Charles Bronson doesn't meet his demise on screen, a nod to his iconic role in the Death Wish series. The controversy surrounding the Death Wish movies adds another layer to Charles Bronson's legacy. Director Michael Winner saw Bronson as the perfect fit for the main character, Paul Kersey, a man driven to seek revenge after a personal tragedy. Bronson's intense aura resonated with Winner, who believed it suited the role impeccably. The premise of the film, depicting a vigilante architect turned gun-wielding Avenger, captured Bronson's interest despite initial rejections from Hollywood heavyweights like Clint Eastwood, Frank Sinatra, and Henry Fonda. Bronson's readiness to embrace the role was characteristic of his tough guy persona, in his signature style, he expressed his enthusiasm, stating, I'd like to do it, emphasizing his eagerness to portray the character. His agent, Paul Conner, expressed concerns about the film's controversial theme, cautioning Bronson about the potential risks associated with glorifying vigilantism. However, Bronson remained steadfast in his belief that the movie conveyed a cautionary tale about the perils of revenge, citing the proverb, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind, as his guiding principle. Death Wish made its theatrical debut on July 24, 1974, garnering significant attention and box office success. Despite its commercial triumph, the film faced criticism from Brian Garfield, the author of the original 1972 novel. Garfield expressed reservations about Bronson's casting as Kersey, fearing that his portrayal would glorify violence. 
He believed that Bronson's presence signaled a descent into mayhem. Adding to the intrigue surrounding the Death Wish saga, it's fascinating to note Brian Garfield's original vision for the film adaptation. Garfield initially envisioned acclaimed director Sidney Lumet helming the project, with Jack Lemmon cast in the lead role. The prospect of Lemmon portraying a vigilante adds an intriguing twist to the narrative, diverging significantly from Charles Bronson's portrayal. However, director Michael Winner's response to Garfield's novel was far from favorable. Winner dismissed Garfield's work, highlighting its limited commercial success and questioning its thematic depth. His candid critique, though blunt, underscored the stark reality of the story's premise and its potential cinematic adaptation. Following the resounding success of the inaugural Death Wish film, Hollywood capitalized on its popularity by producing a series of sequels. Charles Bronson reprised his role as Paul Kersey, not just once or twice, but a staggering five times. The sequels, released in 1974, 1982, 1985, 1987, and 1994, solidified Bronson's association with the iconic character. However, despite the franchise's commercial triumph, Brian Garfield remained critical of the subsequent films. He viewed them as mere vehicles to showcase Bronson's acting abilities, expressing dissatisfaction with what he perceived as vanity projects devoid of substance. The impact of the Death Wish franchise extended beyond the realm of cinema, sparking controversy and cultural discourse. One notable incident occurred in 1984 when Bernhard Gutz shot four young black men on a New York City train, earning him the moniker Subway Vigilante. In a curious turn of events, the director of Death Wish, Michael Winner, found himself entangled in the conversation. When questioned about the incident, Winner made a cringeworthy remark stating, I don't approve of what Mr. Gutz did, but hey, if he's got to shoot someone on the subway, why not when we're opening? His insensitive comment drew criticism. Fast forward to 2015 and the Death Wish franchise resurfaced in an unexpected context during a rally held by none other than Donald Trump, the former president of the United States. Trump proudly boasted about possessing a handgun permit and declared his readiness to defend himself against potential attackers. Remarkably, he invoked the spirit of Death Wish, suggesting that he would not hesitate to use force if confronted. The crowd's response was equally striking, chanting Charles Bronson's name in a surreal moment of convergence between politics and pop culture. Trump's assertion that Death Wish could not be made today due to political correctness added another layer of complexity to the ongoing discourse surrounding the franchise's legacy. Following his departure from the Death Wish series in 1994, Bronson ventured into television with a series of TV movies titled A Family of Cops. Maintaining his trademark persona of the strong, silent type, Bronson's characters continued to embody the rugged toughness that had become synonymous with his name. This wasn't mere happenstance. Bronson himself preferred to communicate through action rather than words, a trait that mirrored his on-screen personas and only grew more pronounced as he ascended within the entertainment industry. Despite his illustrious career, Bronson remained remarkably modest. Surprisingly, he couldn't bear to watch his own films, a sentiment that underscored his humility despite his fame. However, Bronson experienced an unexpected turn of events when his life became the subject of a biographical film. In 1990, following the passing of his beloved wife, Jill Ireland, the memoirs of her life were adapted into a film. Yet far from being touched by the tribute, Bronson expressed deep disappointment and even considered legal action against the filmmakers. Bronson's real-life persona often blurred with his on-screen toughness. He had a penchant for regaling others with wild tales of his past, painting himself as a rugged and sometimes violent individual off-screen. However, upon closer inspection, many of these stories proved to be embellishments or outright fabrications. While Bronson may have cultivated an aura of danger and intrigue, those who knew him personally attested that he bore little resemblance to the violent characters he portrayed on screen. In reality, he was merely adding a touch of spice to his own legend, enhancing his mystique in the eyes of the public. Despite his iconic status, Bronson's idiosyncrasies continued to fuel speculation and intrigue among the public. One such peculiar habit was his aversion to shaking hands, a behavior that some misconstrued as arrogance. 
However, the truth behind this seemingly standoffish demeanor was far more innocuous. Bronson harbored a deep-seated fear of falling ill and consequently avoided handshakes to minimize the risk of exposure to germs. While some speculated that this behavior hinted at obsessive-compulsive tendencies, such assumptions remain speculative. Another fear that gripped Bronson throughout his life was the fear of fire. This phobia profoundly influenced his choices and behaviors, particularly during his time on film sets. For instance, during the filming of Death Wish in 1974, Bronson insisted on lodging in hotels with rooms no higher than the second floor, driven by his determination to ensure a swift and safe evacuation in the event of a fire. Despite his tough guy persona on screen, Bronson's private life revealed a more sensitive and introspective side. An avid painter and sculptor, he found solace and expression in the world of art, often preferring to discuss his creative endeavors over his acting career in interviews. Bronson's humility extended to his artwork, as he eschewed leveraging his celebrity status to boost sales. Instead, he opted to paint under his birth name, Binsky, in an effort to maintain anonymity and ensure that his creations were appreciated on their own merits. Remarkably, Bronson's paintings garnered significant acclaim and found success in their own right. In addition to his cinematic achievements, Charles Bronson's personal interactions often revealed a softer, more compassionate side beneath his tough exterior. One such heartwarming anecdote involves a young Kurt Russell, who was just 12 years old when he had the opportunity to work alongside Bronson in a movie. Russell, upon learning that it was Bronson's birthday, decided to surprise him with a thoughtful gift, a remote-controlled airplane. However, Bronson's initial reaction seemed somewhat reserved, perhaps caught off guard by the unexpected gesture. However, the story takes a heartwarming turn a few months later on Russell's own birthday. In a touching display of reciprocity, Bronson presented Russell with a top-of-the-line skateboard, demonstrating his appreciation and kindness in return. Moreover, when a security guard attempted to prevent Russell from using the skateboard on the studio lot, Bronson intervened without hesitation. He stood up for Russell, marching alongside him to confront the studio boss, boldly declaring, we're both going to be skateboarding around the lot. Isn't that a touching example of kindness? Charles Bronson's life was marked by both triumphs and tribulations, showcasing his resilience in the face of adversity. After enduring the heartbreaking loss of his beloved second wife, Bronson found solace and companionship once again with Kim Michelle Weeks, a younger actress who stood by his side until the very end. Despite his personal challenges, Bronson also faced health struggles, including the need for a new hip at one point, which eventually led him to retire from acting due to declining health. In 2003, at the age of 81, Bronson passed away, his life cut short by complications related to breathing problems and lung cancer, leaving behind a legacy that continues to resonate with fans and admirers worldwide. Bronson's family life was complex, with multiple children from various relationships. One of his daughters, Katrina Holden Bronson, revealed that she was adopted, shedding new light on Bronson's family dynamics. Despite this revelation, Katrina found success as a film director, carving out her own path in the entertainment industry. Yet perhaps one of the most intriguing aspects of Bronson's legacy is his financial acumen. Through astute contract negotiations, he amassed a substantial fortune, estimated at around $75 million in today's money. His wealth included a diverse array of properties, ranging from lavish mansions to sprawling farms. However, amidst his material possessions, the most cherished item he left behind was a painting titled Scoop Town, a poignant reminder of his past that held deep sentimental value. The story of Charles Bronson serves as a poignant reminder that beneath the veneer of toughness lay a man capable of profound love and compassion. His journey exemplifies the resilience of the human spirit and underscores the enduring power of empathy and connection in the face of life's challenges. As we reflect on Bronson's legacy, it prompts us to consider our own aspirations for the future. What legacy do we hope to leave behind? What treasures will define our individual journeys? These questions invite introspection and contemplation, encouraging us to strive for lives filled with love, compassion, and meaningful contributions to the world around us. 
Share your thoughts on these themes in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more updates. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, stay tuned for further insights and reflections.